Hello, first and friends of first. Happy to have you back for changing the game in a bonus episode this week. We were on live yesterday with Rapid Reboot, and we're excited today for this guest on today's episode, which is Emma Dumont, who is a first alum, has been involved in several different uh, athletic competitions and, and achievements, everything from being classically trained in ballet to roller derby to the stunts that she's done on her show. So we're very excited to have Emma today. I'm excited to see what questions you have for Emma. And um, we're going to go right ahead and hop her on. She's requested to let's do the uh, discussion. So give her a second quick to hop on, but get your questions ready. Get your comments ready. There we go. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thanks for com- for hopping on. Thanks for taking the time um, to join Changing the Game. I was telling everyone that was coming on that not only are you uh, a first alum, but you have been in a wide variety of kind of athletic achievements. So it's going to be fun to hop around a couple of different areas today. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Definitely, guys, start throwing your comments in. We got some good questions earlier uh, that will hop in, so we're definitely going to touch on the questions that the audience has asked. And um, I, I am excited to see what area you guys are, want to hear most about, whether that's ballet, roller derby, first, uh, a little bit of stunts that you've done maybe on some of your shows. So whatever you guys oh, think yeah. is, uh, you're most excited about, please throw that into the comments and um, we'll make sure to, to address them. But um, I wanted to hear first, just how did you get in on this journey? I mean, it's a wide variety of different areas that you've had experience in. Um, where did it all start? What were you passionate about when you were very young? Um, everything. <laughs> I guess so yeah, crazy. yeah, like as an adult, I do a lot of different activities still. I'm very much like, uh, I have a lot of hobbies. I like always am trying to learn new things and do new things and, and you know, that sort of thing. But I was very much the same as a, as a child growing up. I, I wanted to do it all. Theater, ballet, swimming, karate, like just all of it. I wanted to do it all, immerse myself. The only thing I can't do, and I took classes for like art classes, but the only thing I can't do is like visual arts, like painting, drawing, none of that. I can't do it. I'm so bad. I tried as a kid. I gave it up, you guys. I gave it up. Um, yeah, roller derby, all of it. I mean, I just, I have a lot of interest and I want to experience a lot of different things. And like, I'm not, I don't have innate talent for, um, very many things. I'd say the only thing I'm naturally good, good at is like math and that's it. Okay. <laughs> and then every, everything else is just me really wanting to try really hard at things. Uh-huh. Um, you know, like as far as ballet, I wasn't really born with a ballet body type. I definitely, for roller derby, I was never athletic. I could never skate. <laughs> Um, and it's, I, th- I guess maybe part of it also is like the idea of facing challenges, um, which really interests me. So maybe that's why I do so many things. But yeah, so as a, as a kid, I liked it all. I don't know. That's, it's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in the comments a lot of requests for each one of those topics. So I guess we're going to end up addressing everything. But it's okay. great that you kind of just played around and tried and explored, and found out what you were very passionate about, found out what you weren't so good, good at as well, um, and just, you know, explored your way towards the things that you really enjoyed the most. Um, how did that kind of exploration take you towards first? What, what was your first interaction uh, with robotics? And, and did that was that one of those exploration things at first, too, that just ended up going into something that you loved? or? Oh my goodness. My journey with first is an interesting one. So I, growing up, I wanted to be an architect really, really bad. I used to like draw, like draft blueprints, like as a child with like electric schematics and all these things. It was super nerdy and weird, but I liked drafting because it kind of mixed the thing I can't do, which is drawing, um, like a, like a creative thing with a, like with a STEM, a STEM thing. Um, and I thought that was so awesome. and like design. And so my mom was, I, I, and so after I realized everything was like online, on, or not, excuse me, on everything's digital, everything's on computers, nobody's drafting anymore to like design building. Um, I was like, maybe I don't want to be an architect, maybe I want to be an engineer. And so my mom okay. immediately was like, I'm going to track down a youth engineering program. Let me see if those exist. Let's see what's out there. And I think I was like 15, maybe. 
and my mom found first, and she found a first uh, tech challenge team, an all-girls team, out in Pasadena, and it was through the Girl Scouts, and she was like, you're going to this, and I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I was, I very much like did not want to go. I was like, I don't know these girls. I don't want to do this. I, I, I don't know these people. Like, it was weird. It's so weird because everything else, like I said earlier, everything else in my life, I like jump in two feet. Like I want to do it, give my heart to it, give my soul to it. I don't care if I'm bad at it. I'll try it, you know, a million times over. But for some reason, I just didn't. I don't know if it was intimidating, and that that could be part of it. You know, women in STEM and girls who are interested in math and science, of course, have always have a thing where they're like, you know, they question themselves, and that's just like something we have to fix. And like, how we're raised, how we condition our our, our youth. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure why I was tentative about it. But she she took me, and within literally, it took like two meetings, and I was I was. Thinking I was team captain, I used to take the robots <laughs> home with me. I was obsessed. I mean, it, it, I mean, I'm still here. I'm still with first. It's been so many years, and so I really didn't want to join first. But then immediately after I did first tech challenge, I immediately was like, same season, the exact same season. I was like, I was like, mom, I need to join a first. I was like, what's above this? What's the next thing? I got it. I did it. Let's do it. What's the next thing? And she's like, well, there's another program called First Robotic Competition, which is, like, the next one up. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, let's find a team. I want a team. Let's do it. So the same exact season, I went from First Tech Challenge to First Robotic Competition. And I went from going um, from being on an all-girls team to being on, accidentally, an all-boys team. Um, and I still had a leadership position, um, whether it was assigned to me or not. <laughs> I decided <laughs> I was in charge again. Um, so yeah, so it was just a, a sort of whirlwind of, I don't want to do this, to I'm obsessed with this, this is my life. That's incredible, and I, I love that it was that kind of a little bit of a push that needed to get into, but that you ended up enjoying it and then almost taking over everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from zero to 100 real, real quick, right? Um, For sure. And so was there anything specific that you remember, though, that you're like, okay, now this is what I'm going to do. Was there a moment or was it just a general experience that you ended up enjoying? Oh, no, I totally remember. I totally remember. So in first tech challenge, so a lot of you know this experience. You know, you have to go in, you have to watch the, watch the game, read the, the game book, and then you have to figure out, like, um, strategy, what you want to go for, and you have to vote, and there's a lot of voting and deciding what mechanisms you need and this and that. And I was like, this is fun, this is cool, blah, 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 whatever. Like, it's cool to, like, think of ideas. Like, that's very exciting. But when we started physically working on the robot, using using tools and doing work, like, physical work, like, manufacturing yeah. parts, pieces, whatever, that was when I was like, this is my soul. I want to give <laughs> my entire life to this thing, this robotic thing. And I think that's also the moment where it, it like, when I, the switch flip for me where I was like, because I sort of was like, I want to do engineering, but I don't know what kind. And that's when I was like, mechanical engineering. I want okay. to, like, that specifically, I like, I love that. And what I love about, like, do I love, I, oh, I also got really into AutoCAD that year, too, for some reason. I was like, yeah, I was like full in, I'm remembering now. Like, it was back to the art thing again. Yeah, 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 I think I can't do, yet I keep trying. Um, but yeah, so I like, I just, yeah, working with my hands building something mechanical um, that's not just sort of a free, again, the art, the art thing. It's not, you know, it's not, it, 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 it's like the, where art and design meet science and technology, mm -hmm. sort of, you know, you can't just build something, you have to design it, you have to prototype it, you have to like, whatever it is, work out the vector forces, work out the whatever you want to, you know, whatever it is for whatever you're building, and I think that's where it like came together for me. I was like, this is what I want. Yeah, you, you found that, that space that was right for you. Yeah. Um, I just saw Garrett uh, from Qualcomm throw a couple of comments. What's up? Oh my goodness. To Garrett and Qualcomm and all the other first supporting companies that may be uh, joining us right now. Shout out to Rock Automation for making this possible. Um, and I've seen a lot of comments from all different countries. I've, I've seen some ask if anyone speaks Spanish, Hablo Espanol. 
Um, I've noticed some Turkish in there too as well. Some oh, wow. the first community coming in from all over uh, to join in on the discussion. Um, so let's shift now more towards the, the sports and STEM aspect of your life. And uh, like I mentioned, we've got several different areas in, in your experience that you may be able to touch on. So I'll let you decide which ones you want to touch on first. But let's start with, is there a particular area in any of those uh, sports where you felt that people may not realize how much STEM there is in this space? That like, just naturally like, wow, I don't get why people don't see this. Yes, yes, yes. I love this question. So, so, um, and it's so funny. So I grew up dancing classical ballet. Um, and in a part, an aspect of ballet, there's like adagio, petit allegro, there are all these different like things and terms and French things for different styles of, of, of ballet you do, um, kinds of dances. And one of them is turns. And I am a very, very tall individual. I'm five foot nine plus. Um, and so for some reason I was just like never good at turns. It wasn't like my body type and I just could never figure it out. But, I, what I love about turns is that it's all based in, in, in physics, like all, mm -hmm. all of it. It's all just physics. I mean, for the turns, pirouettes, all of it is physics, and I think it's like so fascinating. And I actually did a presentation on this a few years ago in Kansas City um, about how like it's all about inertia. And uh, you know, you watch you watch a dancer, and you're like, how are they going so fast? And then you watch these shows like Dance Moms, and you see them. And they'll do something like this. They'll be turning, and then they'll bring their arms in really close, and they'll start turning faster and faster and faster. And you're like, what is that? Like, what is that? I have no idea what that is. Um, so it's really, like, all about inertia. And so inertia, the formula for inertia is MR squared. And so for those of you who are listening, uh, M would be mass, as you know. And R, R, R is um, actually the distance of mass from the axis point of rotation. So, and that's what your ar limbs, arms, legs, everything is, because when you're a ballet dancer, you're coming from your very center. And so I love that idea that, like, everyone's, like, everyone's so impressed where people, like, you know, they actually, like, lower their leg into the coupe and bring their arms in, and then they'll start, like, mm -hmm. rotating super, super quickly. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it looks like magic, but really it's just mm -hmm. physics. <laughs> and so I think that's my, my favorite aspect of ballet that and I didn't get it because I grew up I grew up dancing ballet since I was three but I didn't realize that it could all be explained really easily you know with pencil and paper <laughs> um, you know using like science and that's like hmm, that's so fascinating to me and it's also because it was something I was never good at like I was never I never did balance I was never a good turner but I was like I understand this from a different point of view and and I think it's I think it's like very awesome but it's not just ballet it's like a lot of sports have these things you know you think about like something like soccer mm -hmm. and you're like well that's i mean all of it like i it's just like i don't know it's really interesting it's fascinating I talk <laughs> yeah. A lot, sorry. yeah i imagine just like thinking of like a last minute shot in a basketball game if you had to physically put the physics of that on paper like the distance between you and oh yeah, move, right. The speed you're moving. Oh, you're at, like, yeah, resistance. you're mapping out the projectile. I mean, it's so cool. It's awesome because we look at athletes as sort of superstars. We're like, mm -hmm. oh, they're elite humans. They're stronger, faster, whatever. All these other things. But yeah. sometimes maybe you don't have to be the fastest or the strongest because you could use these aspects of physics. You know, you could use leverage or torque or yeah. uh, uh, friction in, in roller derby. There's a lot of uh, a lot of friction used in roller derby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do these things and like and still be great at it. Yeah. So yeah, just going back to that equation. So if you just understand that the reducing the R, because your personal mass isn't going to change, right? But if you reduce yeah. the R or increase the R, then that will, I guess, either speed up or slow down your rotation is that what was happening then yeah totally yes yeah so if you reduce the mass the distance of the mass from the center yeah. you go faster you go okay. faster yeah which is like awesome so then i guess kind of like hugging yourself would cause yeah you to... so in theory if you could get your body to be a one singular point you would go that would be you at your fastest in theory that of course can't happen you can't like wrap yourself into <laughs> a singular point yeah. And so I think for, for some who may not have watched ballet, but maybe have seen uh, figure skating, I think you notice that a lot in figure skating, right? Yeah, the same. Oh, yeah, they definitely do that. Yeah, when you watch the Olympics and then they'll like, 
they'll start out big with their leg like an attitude or something and then they'll get like really skinny you're like what happened they just like closed <laughs> in and they're going so fast it's the same thing it's the exact same thing that's that's really cool because i've seen that before and I just wondered or same with uh gymnasts probably as well when they're jumping and, and doing crazy flips oh, yeah. and spins uh that's awesome that by connecting the physics and understanding that you could become a better ballet artist or a better figure skater or or gymnast totally. just by understanding that equation uh is, is really cool to think about um and, and i don't know you know i don't think any of you are actually writing it out necessarily. <laughs> maybe, maybe you, you are but either way just having the the kind of concept in mind can help you either learn it more effectively improve your skill and or help teach someone else totally. yeah. What about it? And again, we can use any of the, the, your background that you want to touch on, but what's something that's remained just like unchanged in, in your sports or the things that you've been working on that you feel maybe if we added some sex science and technology to this, we can improve <laughs> it a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think, you know, as far as roller derby goes, there is always, there are roller derby. So, we skate and we skate, obviously. I don't know why I said that. But, but the technology of wheels is always changing. Okay. They all have different friction with the floor and different and tracks are made of different material. So I feel like I think STEM could really like dig into some like speed skating yeah. and maybe help help out. You know, um, I, I skate a roller derby on um, a bank track. So for those of you who okay. don't know, it's... Um, it's like a, a track, like at the roller rink, but it's on a slight angle all the way around. It's like, what is that called? That cyclist bike on on those tracks? Oh, what is yeah. that called? You know what I'm talking about, right? So yeah, that's it, what it, it curves on the angle as you're going yeah. through those like, edges. They have like a bank. Totally. Curve. Yes, and I think some race tracks also do that. Yeah. Um, and so you know, um, I always wanted to go as fast as possible, and so I want the wheels with the least amount of, um, or or oh, actually, that's not true. What I just said. Um, I almost said least amount of friction, but that's not true. We all like to say the car can um, speed. But um, yeah, I just think that if playing, playing with the, the the dimensions or the angles of a bank track would be really super interesting and fascinating. Um, because we're supposed to we skate in like a very specific pattern. So you know, yeah. you guys you guys know what tracks look like. They um, are like ovals, right? So, but we actually skate in a circle. And you're like, what are you talking about? How can you skate a circle in an oval? Um, but we skate in a path that makes like almost a perfect circle. They say a diamond, like skate, okay. skate in a diamond. And again, it's like race cars. Race cars do the same thing if you, if yeah. you watch racing. Um, but like, I think it would be interesting to find ways that you can make. Anyway, so the reason we skate in a circle is because it, it's like the fastest. You, you skate your back kind of like that. Okay. And, um, and I just think it would be interesting if someone like played with a traditional class and like, and, Fine minutes because people can go faster. I mean, I, I think I skated 32 laps in five minutes with like my speed, but I would like to do more. <laughs> so, just to get that straight, the, the track itself is uh, an oval, kind of like a regular track and field track. But the yeah. path that you're taking along the curves and along the track, you want that to be as circular as possible in order yes. to increase your speed and I guess less distance on the track is that is that what it is well no not it's not actually necessarily the least distance so when you think about an oval track you're like well why don't you just skate on the inside the whole time like in an oval on the smallest you know it's the smallest path um but that actually isn't the most beneficial for skaters so we skate on the curved parts on the outside we skate on the innermost part like you're hitting you're hitting your wheels are hitting the inside and then on the straightaways, which are the parts on the, the straight parts on the outside of the oval, you straight okay. you, you skate on the highest point. And you're like, highest point? That seems counterintuitive. But when you look at a map and you look at those points, they make a sort of diamond or a circle. Mm. Okay. And so the idea is we use something we use a, a move, I don't know what, a move, a skating move called a crossover, <laughs> where we cross over one leg on top of the other and push and use the friction from our wheels against the um, track to push us and make us go faster. But what we're doing, what we're actually doing is moving our body further into the center of the track, which okay. allows us to gain more speed. Um, because, okay. Okay, wait, let me rephrase this. So, 
<laughs> Newton's first law. There you um, go. <laughs> so basically, you know, if we're going, if we're skating, we're going to continue to skate. That's what he says. Uh, at most of the stays motion. So if we're skating straight on the straightaways, right? In theory, by this by this law, we're going to keep going straight and like skate off the track and fall off, right? Does that track? And so we actually have to go against that. We have to fight against uh, that and like move our bodies in into the circle or oval track that we're doing. Um, and so we and so that's how we fight against this like this path along the straight path. Okay. And so when you're in a circle opposed to an oval, you don't have to make a sharp turn. So you, you're losing, you're using less of your energy. Um, and so this crossover move, you're using this. And in theory, if you're going in a perfect circle, you should be able to cross over the entire time. Or even the straight part, the quote straight part. I don't know. It's all theoretical. No one can actually stay in the circle on a <laughs> oval track. But it's the idea of it. Um, it's the physics. It's the theoretical yeah. aspects of it. That's great to see how much physics is in both of these sports that I think most people just on the surface may not have dug into or, or, or realized. Yeah, right? Um, I'm getting a couple comments that there's like microphone interference. Uh, oh, no. If you want to try like taking the headphones off or I'm not sure. That's I'm sorry. It's probably, cause I, it's probably because I move so much. I'm like getting very excited. They're like, she needs to stop. Does that sound better? I think so. Um, did you unplug it for a second? I did. Try unplugging it again and talking. Will I be able to hear you still? Oh, wait. Let me just maybe I'll just unplug it. Hear me? Yeah, I think that's better, actually. Okay, that's better. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry for, for all that. I'm sorry, guys. Somebody should have told me sooner before I went on my crazy rant about skating in a circle. I heard a little bit at first, and then it kind of went away, and then it came back, and I saw it in the comments. So I, I thought we were oh, okay. yes, they were hearing it. Sorry, um, guys. No, we're good. So keep throwing good questions in there. I've seen a lot of comments. I've seen, again, different languages, um, support and love from, from both your first family your polaris family <laughs> some fans <laughs> of ballet in there as well so uh, make sure we'll address some of the questions from the crowd in a second um and and definitely keep throwing the hearts in there uh so when when thinking of roller derby one of the things i think about is just like safety and padding and all that right is there, is there any high tech stuff there or is it just like we're tough and uh we're gonna do what we do out here no there's a lot of, did you say high tech yeah like in terms yeah, of like no, the, it's, the all, it's, all tech. it's all high tech like my, the the pads we use are definitely not the same that like my grandmother would have used for sure okay. it's all like new technology um you know they're even specialized so roller derby was um kind of revamped in the 2000s in austin texas and it's become sort of like an underground thing. It was an underground thing, but now it's like kind of more mainstream. Wrong turn, yeah. yay. Um, and so, yeah, with that comes like, there are these brands that make, like have, you know, people making so like solely for roller derby protection things because they've run the test and they know what works for different pads. Um, yeah. But my favorite thing, and this is going to sound so silly, but <laughs> have you guys ever worn, have you ever worn a mouth guard before for a sport? Yeah. Okay, right. So they're the kinds that you have to like, they're like boil and bite ones where you like yep. boil it, you like put it in your mouth. It like kind of shapes your teeth, but not yeah. really. Like doesn't really do that much. Oh, wait, let me get, this is so gross. I'm so sorry. I'm going to get it one second. No worries. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about because I was in uh, Taekwondo growing up. So. Oh, so I you totally know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So they're like ones that don't shape at all. They're ones that you like boil and bite where they kind of do something. But then there are these new ones. And they actually come like this. They come completely flat. Okay. And um, lots of people use these now, but, like, when I started skating, these weren't that popular. But now the technology is, like, you know, red readily available for the general populace. Yeah. Um, and so it's cool. So it's it's boil and bite. Like, you put it in hot water and you bite into it. But it literally forms, like, like, like you would get at the dentist. Yeah. And so it's not so much the technology because this has existed for a while, right? You just like heat it up and warms your teeth and then it gets cold and it stays. Yeah. And like you, they use this at the dentist's office all the time, but it's like the, the, it's the process of making this technology uh, more economical. So you can make more of them, make them, give them to the people. So you're not just like, they're not sending them just to the dentist. They can like, yeah. I can buy this at the store now, which is so cool. 
Um, so yeah, but there's, and so like, I started skating when I was a teenager and I don't even think these existed, but then they um, started coming out with them and I was like so excited because you know how uncomfortable mouth guards can be. Yeah. They're not like, but these are legit. They're so good. And you can drink water with them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They're like, they stay in like a retainer. It's crazy. I sound like such a dork anyway, but, um, yeah. So you're you're like what cool technologies have come out? And I'm like mouth guards, <laughs> guys. It's mouth guards. No, but because it's... everything that you're saying were things that I hated about my mouth guard. Like, and it's it's a technology I feel that most people just wouldn't even think of addressing because this is how we've always done it. So with totally. the community that we have here on on the call, if, for all of you that are listening into these type of things, you don't have to re or you don't have to create this totally new brand new uh crazy technology you can start with, even with just improving some of the things that already exist and making them more either efficient safer more comfortable i remember drinking water during taekwondo practice was the worst the you worst just get like a puddle in your uh yes. your mouth guard and it was really weird <laughs> yeah like i'm waiting for someone to come out with like a new football or a new soccer yeah. ball like what's the deal let's make new cleats i mean it's like it doesn't have you don't have to re reinvent the wheel like you said you can take like what already exists and like make it into something more beneficial like they always say invention is pro just problem solving you know for a problem you may not even recognize yet so like yeah your mouth guard was uncomfortable and you got a puddle of water and we all just kind of accept these things as part of our lives but people can change these things scientists engineers Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel it just, it comes down to solving problems in the areas that you're passionate about. So someone just really hated their mouth guard with passion and decided, Hey, we should be able to do this uh, in a much better way. But, or on the flip side, you really love something and you just want it to be better. You want it to be more accessible to people, R regardless of what you're excited about for students, just go out there and start, playing around with new ideas and new prototypes and I, I love seeing it. I haven't seen it yet. So that's cool to, to see that that exists now. Very cool. So I want to look at some of the questions because we've had some Sweet. people patiently waiting with, uh, you know, some of the questions that they have submitted. Um, and so here we go. Sorry, I'm going through here real quick to find the right ones. Um, cause we did address some of them in here. We had some around kind of how your interest in robotics first took place, which we mentioned already. Um, and then we've got some, just some shout outs from different countries. There's a lot of people on the call from, from, uh, Turkey. What's up Turkey? I, yeah, I know we've got a lot of FRC teams out there. Um, so shout out to everyone in Turkey. Um, here's a good one. What do you miss most about your first experience? Oh my gosh, it like popped up on the screen. <laughs> See, guys, look, new technology. Someone at this app, like part of the development team of Instagram was like, we need to we need to develop like a way for the questions to pop up during the live. I love it. Um, okay, what do you miss most about your first experience? You know, all of it. <laughs> everything. Like, everything. I don't know. Yeah. Look, let's just be honest. It's a super rad program where like companies will sponsor you basically like buy you parts, buy you materials. I mean, you have to buy them, but they'll like, they'll, you know, um, sponsor your team and you're, and like big companies too, Qualcomm, Boeing, NASA, like it's crazy. And then you get to take these parts that this, these people bought you and make <laughs> cool stuff. I mean, it's just the best. Like, sorry, I'm just gonna be point blank about I it. Like, it. it's the best experience ever. And like, I could say something like, oh, I miss making friends and this and that. And that's totally true. Oh my gosh, wait, that is true. I like made fun of it, but now I'm like, <laughs> Wait, I do miss that. But I, I don't actually miss that because the friends I made in first were not necessarily the friends on my team. I met, have met so many amazing um, girl, amazing people who were girls who were interested in STEM, who are now women with with fantastic STEM careers. And these are still my friends. Excellent. And, you know, so I don't even have to say I miss miss my friends from first because I still like know them and talk to them and hang out with them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I just m miss – what I miss is being able to be part of the engineering process, like the design process, manufacturing, fabrication, all of it. Like, it's a whole system that you get to be a part of. It's real-world experience, and you get to do that as a – sometimes, like, you seven-year-olds get to do it. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's 
<laughs> so many different programs. I unfortunately got into it later in life, but for me, it's just like you get real world hands on experience. And a lot of the times, you know, when you go to college, you don't really get that experience. I go to Cal Poly Pomona. It's very hands on. It's it's one of the most hands on schools in the nation for mechanical engineering for engineering period. But many schools are still lecture based. A lot of places are in this old fashioned sort of thinking where it's all lecture based. And so students miss, they jump from first where they get to, you know, do the work, do the actual work, design, design a project, complete a project, design, build all this stuff. And then they jump and they have to like sit in lecture halls and then they go out into the work workforce and they finally get to do the engineering they've missed since high school. And so I think, yeah, what I miss most about first is just how it really parallels like real world experiences and what it really is focused in um, preparing you for that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that was like great. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it like you feel accomplished, you feel excited, Mm -hmm. you feel like proud. And that's such, I feel like I don't want to sound self-serving or whatever, but you do, you feel proud that you did this really hard thing that you know, that you, that is intimidating and weird and crazy because we don't have sort of these technical hands-on programs in schools yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and so it takes an organization like first to, to give this opportunity to students. Um, You know, someday we will, I think someday the schools will teach like really practical things. Um, But for now it's, it's sort of, you know, you don't, in our country, we don't get to, even pick a major till we're 18, you know, other places like the UK, they do go into concentrations at 16. So it's like, it's just, I miss that. I miss being able to do like the full, the full experience, the full (laughs) real world (laughs) engineering experience. I'm going to echo that. So I went to the University of Wisconsin. We actually have a lot of things in common. I originally wanted to be an architect as well. What? Uh, my fiance studied a year of architecture before switching over to industrial engineering. Oh, crazy. And then, uh, I chose mechanical engineering as well. So we, we, we've gotten both that there. Um, <laughs> but I wasn't on a first team. I wish I would have been uh, exposed to it. But I definitely, my senior design project at, you know, a mechanical engineering program in a university was not as as intense, I think, as if, you know, four years of first would be in FRC or FTC. So it's like this: the experience that you all are having, or that you will have if you're on here as an FLL student, is incredibly invaluable and is going to prepare you for all that cool stuff that you're going to wish you could do when you're in the classroom writing it on, you know, pen, uh, pencil and paper, and you really want to be out there working on things. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm curious, let's go back to, we haven't touched a lot on stunts. Do you do some of your own stunts? Are you, uh, or at least, I mean, I know you have some background in understanding them. Um, are, are you, how does that work with you? And what areas have you seen some science and technology being engaged there? I'm sure there's plenty, again, a lot of physics, a lot of <laughs> pulleys and cool things um, and definitely safety. So what have you seen in that space for people that may be on here from, you know, fans of some of your shows and then also just the first community that's uh wants to see the stem behind that area yeah so i um do do all my own stunts um which is amazing and i also want to add in addition to stunts there's also a lot of stem if you will in Mm -hmm. um practical effects so um we all know what vfx is it's like um i always think about the the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, that Narnia film with the lion, like there was that beautiful lion. I think that was, I watched that and I was like, that was the first time where like VFX really stood out to me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. So that's like computers, right? So that's mm-hmm. digital, digital art. art. Um, and, but my character on The Gifted, the X, X-Men show I was on, mm-hmm. she mostly had practical effects. And so practical okay. effects are, it's, 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 I mean, it could be anything. At one point, I had glass flying in, at me, or mm-hmm. um, you know, they have to make. Um, oh, let me. Th- oh, they have to make. Oh my gosh, one, and it seems it seems people like freaked out about it. So there's a scene where I'm like stirring a cup of coffee, but I'm not touching the the spoon, which mm-hmm. is like so little. But people were like, "Whoa, this is crazy! Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so real!" And I was like, "No, no, no, it is real. That's not." Um, digital. It's not VFX. It's yeah. actually practical effects. So someone had to build a rig with a yeah. a, a table, a magnet, a, cu- a mug, mm-hmm. and a spoon, and like attach them on. So it's like 
those kinds of things are really amazing to me because someone's just like going to work and engineering these cool tricks, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're just like, cool tricks. Um, and, and that's like really awesome. And I'm like, gosh, maybe I should get into like effects and there are like bigger things obviously they're like explosions and other things that take a lot more like diligence and you have to be very like careful and lots of other wild wild things um but yeah so that's practical effects are very cool and there's a lot of stem in that um as far as stunts yeah i do my own stunts um yeah no you said pulley systems that's it baby yes i my character flew or like she flew i'm not allowed to say flew well not anymore i'm not on the show but um, the show's over but i can do whatever i want now um but she she okay really quick tangent so my character controlled um um she was like the queen of magnetism so anything that was magnetic she could control so i eat iron for those of you who don't know so mm -hmm. anything with iron in it and every lots of things have iron in it you'd be surprised so humans have iron in them yeah. um you know the earth has iron in it so you know everyone's like oh your character flies she flies and i'm like well she doesn't really fly which she's actually doing and this is so crazy when you think about it she's manipulating or no she doesn't do this her dad did this what she's doing is she's like there's like iron in her shoes and she's like lifting herself up but her dad let's talk about that this is what's actually yeah. interesting he is using the iron that naturally exists in the earth's core mm -hmm. to propel himself to levitate against it and make himself quote fly which is so mm -hmm. cool that's just super cool anyway yeah. that was i don't know what where i was going with this oh yeah pulley systems so yes yeah. so my flying was all done with pulleys and like you know you wear a harness and all this and that and they attach you mm -hmm. to a rig and it's a whole thing and i don't know anything about it i mean i know how pulley systems work i take i you know i took vector statics um but uh but I, I don't know the specifics of the one i was on but yeah it's like that's a big part of it and also you know joking about like whatever this and that but you know this is all about sports and stem and sports mm -hmm. well when you're doing stunts when you're playing a sport when you're you know doing this there's physical contact like roller derby especially ballet not so much people get hurt but not so much but like yeah. roller derby is like a partially partial contact sport and it's all about safety so you know it's sort of like these people who are engineering these things, whether they be your mouth guard, your knee pads, your helmet, the the pulley rig you're attached to up 50 feet in the air. I mean, it's really, there's, it has to be very specific. I mean, the margin of error needs to be like almost non-existent because people's yeah. lives are, are being, are, are being put out there. Um, and that's sort of like, we don't think about that for sports. Like we think sports athletes like put themselves out there. Like they're like, I'm good. They'll play through an injury. They'll do anything. Yeah. But when you really think about it, it's, there's like a lot that can happen. And so, yeah, it's like definitely stunts is, um, there's a lot of stem and stunts. I like how I like tried to wrap that up, that rant. And like, <laughs> no <laughs> terrible. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Just stem and stunts, leave it at that. Now. <laughs> um, there's there's a, a lot of good comments in there though, based on that. And so if students are excited about, if you guys are excited about anything in the show business, there's a lot of things that go into behind the scenes even being possible in the first place. So imagine being a, uh, we had someone from American Ninja Warrior earlier. So the creation of oh. just the structures that they're on is, is pretty impressive. And the same thing for any show or movie that's going on. There's a, a huge production behind that that uh, makes it all possible. And we saw a lot of comments on the, the spoon example that they love that. And I'm glad you shared that and, you, and that you mentioned magic because I'm uh, leading the show called It's Not Magic, It's Science. And one of the coolest examples I thought of that was just that magic shows people that anything's possible. And but the fact or like it makes you want to believe that anything's possible. Right. And then the fact that it's actually science and it's STEM and that it wasn't actually magic, it wasn't a trick, shows that STEM can make anything possible. So whether that's, you know, making amazing mouth guards that are, are not as annoying <laughs> as the old ones or helping you portray your character in a more powerful way. It's so cool to see that, that that's STEM that is leading that. For sure. And so I, I want to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, wait, can you see me? Can you hear me? Am I frozen? Yeah, I got you. I can hear you. 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. I don't know what I was saying. No, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. So we've got two more questions in here that I want to throw out because people have been patient and throwing a lot of good ones in here. Um, Thank you, guys. Sorry I talk a lot. I'm so sorry, guys. No worries. It's not even that. It's just that I, I want to make sure that we get some of the uh, key sports analogies in here. But there's a good one here, too, that goes towards uh, your time on the gifted or um, – I want to combine these two. It's from the same person, but I can only show one at a time. Oh, so darn. The first aspect of it was, what would you want to do next in your mechanical engineering career? And then there was okay. this question that, did you apply mechanical engineering expertise to your time on the gifted? So let's take that in two parts. Have you used it okay. already in your career? And how else would you want to use it maybe in the future if you haven't had the, the chance to do it? Or you okay. want to take it to okay. level? Okay, sweet. I love that. Um, great, fantastic questions, both of them. I would love to be like, yes, I use my mechanical engineering skills every day as a superhero. <laughs> um, but the truth is, I don't because we have amazingly qualified people, you know, building and creating these things. Um, I wish I wish they would let me help. Um, but there are a lot of like union regulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I can't really like get in there and like help design like you know whatever I feel like you just like stop and be like Tr trust me guys I'm an engineer <laughs> like trust me guys I got this don't worry um no so I don't really get to use it in my in my job as an act actor um but it's cool to be around it I will say like mm -hmm. it definitely is because people think of acting as like this creative artistic sort of like I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to like forsake what acting is or like, um, mm -hmm. like people think it's like less than or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. I like have the utmost respect for creative uh, professions as I'm in one of them. Um, mm -hmm. but it, you know, I think people have a certain point of view about it, but it's actually very cool that I get to be surrounded by people who are, you know, using technology, using, you know, designing, designing, creating, building. I mean, all these things, it's like so fascinating and, and it's all different aspects of, of STEM. There's like, there's like, mm -hmm. you know, the mechanical stuff with like, I don't know. It's even like, even just like, do you guys know what a steady cam is? A steady cam? I don't know. I'm. I don't. I'm. Wait. wait do the comments are they coming up? What's that? Someone says my arm is on my mic. What? Anyway, I okay. Right now. <laughs> okay. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? What a steady cam is? No. Okay. So, that's so like a stabilizer type of. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So when you like when you're so so when, when you're watching a movie, I don't know if you guys noticed this. Mike sounds weird again. Oh no! Hi Jen. Um, I'm gonna I keep talking. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so when you're filming and when you watch a TV show and some of the shots are very still, then you know that they're not using a steady cam. But if you, you're watching a movie and you see them like following behind people, there's like it almost looks like somebody's walk like holding camera and walking behind them. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Or it's like it has yeah. a little bit of movement to it, you know, when you're watching them and you're like, why is there some movement there? That means that they're filming using something called a steady cam. And a steady cam is something that's worn by a camera operator. It's a big vest, it's like a big thing. Um, and then the camera's on it right here, right? And so I saw a funny thing on um, TikTok the other day where someone was like, what happens when I, because they, uh, if you looked at a camera operator, operating a steady cam they, they do have their hands on the at part that's away from their body so you would think like oh they're holding it up and he was like well what happens if i let go of it and he like let's go of it and he's like absolutely nothing because it's designed to like distribute weight like amongst my body so that not i'm not like one, so i'm not carrying it with one hand if that makes sense yeah. so um like even that's just like such a marvel of of physics mechanics all of it it's just like mm -hmm. so fantastic i love i love watching people use it do steady cam work um but yeah so as i was saying even though i don't get to use my mechanical engineering um i love that you use the word expertise that's so sweet um i still get to like see it around me a lot which is great um what do i want to do in the future so you know how before i was saying how like you can improve technologies that already exist. So that's what I want to do. I want to go into robotic prosthesis because there is so much technology that is 
that is has been developed and is being used and is helping people but it's not out there we don't buy it you're not you're we're not all cyborgs you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> we don't all have like like mechanical prosthetics and and um prosthesis and stuff so i want to go into that field because i want to like further it along and i think that would okay. be like super fun and cool um use your phone instead of the toaster okay um <laughs> um <laughs> I um so yeah so that's what I want to do um and that's all I have no I think that's an amazing about my future. path forward <laughs> just it's, it's cool to see how you took something like Steadicam now they have ones that you can kind of buy for your own personal iPhone right that like kind of like game yeah ones. so it's cool to see how this was originally used for something that's much more high costs you know production so then now then that technology comes down to a level where almost anyone can access it. Oh yeah. Someone said my girlfriend has one. Yeah, totally. So this is like a technology that's used that, like I, like you said, was really predominantly used in like big, big budget films and, and such. Um, yeah. But now anyone can have it. I even own one. I own one for a phone and you just hold it and it like stabilizes. Yeah. It's so cool. It's like some gyroscopic something amazing. <laughs> Something cool. <laughs> Something cool. All right. So one of the things I really want our first students to take home with them are a couple ideas of things that if you had like a magic wand in any one of your sports uh, and they could go out there and innovate and create something new or make something better, uh, improve in any way, what is one or a couple even of those items that you think could really use some STEM and that teams could go investigate and maybe start working on now. Or also remember, we've got some first Lego league students on here who, you know, have 10, 15 years before they even start, uh, you know, getting into their more adult life, but can still start coming up with some of these more futuristic type ideas and thoughts. So what do I think needs to be upgraded? Yeah, in any of your sports, what would you like? If you Me just personally? Had them on in these teams, okay, here we go. I'm already ready. I have the answer. Okay, here's here's the lowdown, guys. Here's the team. So I started doing marathons in 2019, and I'm not good. I'm not fast. But Nike released these shoes that are supposed to have like some sort of I don't know the again, I don't know the technology, but it's all STEM. There's these really fantastic shoes. Nobody could get them. I actually managed to get a pair. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um and they're just designed in such a way again i don't know the technology i should look into this i sound like i don't know anything but that's fine i don't know and then anyway so they're designed in such a way that like improves your speed okay. um and and then they started banning these shoes at races can you believe that because they were giving too much of a mechanical advantage i guess or like, yes okay. yes, yes. so yeah. i would say that like more people anyway and then they and then they stopped um i think they stopped selling them because people like couldn't use them for their races and so i think like running shoes specifically it would be sick to do more of that like i think that's so interesting because we are built we we are bipedal we are built to walk and run um and so like i think running is like the coolest thing i think it's like i'm not good at it but i like to do it and i think it's like something we're just built we're like mechanically built to do like we're designed to do it so we might as well do it but i think it would be cool to like come up with more ways where we could like excel we can push past like you know they say like our biggest competition is as your biggest competition should be yourself or whatever like i think that's the way we should look at sports and like how we as a we shouldn't like we should stop competing against each other and instead like further the technologies and so like the sports themselves become like higher elite versions of what they are like can you imagine if like someday like in 200 years because because only because not because of like because we've evolved not because of that yeah. but because our technology has evolved that one day people are like oh you sing bolt like you was slow or whatever like you know <laughs> what i mean it's crazy so I, I think that's faster than you saying bolt now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right. um what else what else would be cool what oh you know what scares me so you were talking about um figure skating this is less of like a tech thing and more just like something i'm scared of that i want to get off my chest i'm scared of getting um <laughs> My like ultimate fear is getting cut by the by the um right. blades on the bottom of the ice skates. And this is something my one of my childhood friends, her mom had this happen to her. I think oh. she like 
may have snapped her Achilles. Sorry, I, that's I'm not sorry. It did happen, and <laughs> like, talking to people, and I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to tell their stories or whatever. Anyway, so this happened to her, and I think it'd be great and very cool if they could like design skates that take into consideration every position your body can go into and somehow design i don't know what it would be i don't know if they would retract bl yeah. like blade that retract i don't know okay. what it would be but like to maybe like cut because again like safety safety is like yeah. number one right so that would be super yeah. cool what else what else is i you know what i oh go ahead no, I was just thinking, why why do skates even need to be sharp? So what if we could make a way to go across the ice that wasn't sharp? You know, maybe you just go the other direction. Totally. And you know what? It might not even be a skates thing. It might be an ice thing. Like, maybe the ice yeah. needs to be, like, a manufactured ice or something yeah. that has nothing to do with the skates. Interesting. I think we've come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start an ice skating company together after this. <laughs> I love, I love that. No, but for real, real we should do that. No, I love where you're going, though, even with the shoes, because, yeah, maybe those will be banned for sport. Like, at the Olympics, you won't be able to use those shoes, but could they provide uh, an advantage to someone who has difficulty walking or or people that just want to be able to move around more efficiently in their community? Efficiently. And, totally. And save, you know, uh, not have to drive a car or ride the bus less and ride the bike and... and, and uh, walk instead so i think there's a lot of cool aspects where we can take what we learn from sports and take that over to just everyday life um we've gotten a lot of comments and questions to say uh medava which i believe is turkish for hello uh um, what is so it medava medava i believe is how you say it i was on a on a show last year on telemundo that was produced by a Turkish company. And oh, wow. uh, I have a couple words, but I can't remember. I'm pretty sure- I love it, what else? Can what else that. do you know? What else do you know? Um, so one of the things that we had on the show was a um, like a money wall. And I believe it was Chok para isturu, was like, we want the money type of <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember what else I learned. A couple of things. I love, I love that you remember. <laughs> for all of our friends at first from Turkey, we appreciate you being on here. And, and uh, uh, please correct us if we're wrong with those. Um, please. But yeah, I think those are two good areas that you really gave ideas to first students that are coming up with concepts for the season uh, based around the theme. One, how do you take things that we've gained from sports and apply them to everyday life so that people can walk around uh, more efficiently, safer, etc. Um, I think some of that the protective gear that you mentioned earlier too can be maybe applied to different scenarios. Um, and then the safety with the skates. If teams want to look at, if you're passionate about hockey or ice skating or any other, um, you know, speed Olympic speed skating, does it have to be sharp? Uh, is it the surface that they're on? Is it the, you know, is that the most efficient way to get across? Uh, or is it just because how it's, we've always done it and how we want to continue to do it and maybe it stays the same, but it'd be cool to see, even if it's not used in sport, is there a, a more efficient, a safer, a more exciting uh, way? So I'd love to see first teams work on some of those. Yeah, more um, exciting. Any other ones that come to mind for you uh, on any of the sports you've done, ballet or, or even stunts or, um, or even oh. other sports that you weren't necessarily a part of? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do have one. Wait, I have one comment though. So there is, there is like a... a replacement floor flooring for skating that I used to roller skate on and it's for hockey players who when they're off season when it's not icy or whatever I actually okay. it's when manufactured it's so, wait they make it's like wait, I don't know I don't know anyway it's like for practice when they don't want to have to make yeah. the ice um and it's like but it's really bumpy and I don't think it's as fast so that wouldn't okay. work for like speed yeah. skating or those other things anyway that was just something I thought of um the other thing I want to talk about is um ballet so point shoes are the worst <laughs> any dancers out there y'all know what I'm talking about they're the worst they're super painful and if you don't have like the a specific kind of foot like they they say you can find there's so many different kinds of point shoes and anyone can find one but like no point has always been super 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 painful for me it doesn't matter how callous my feet are how tough my skin is how long I've been doing it it's painful 
Okay. Um, but then there are some girls I know who are like, I don't feel anything on point. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, good for you. You've got like shoes that are like designed and you just happen to have a foot that like fits into those shoes well. Like shoes that fit my feet more are like the Ru Russian companies like um, Grishko or Russian Point. Anyway, nobody cares about that. But like if they could design like maybe adjustable point shoes like what's that you know i mean there's like technology out there where they have there's like a company called gainerman and when they have where they have like um okay so the the part of the point shoe that breaks down so much is the um the shank and so it like sometimes will even just snap it's like and they're very expensive these shoes so there's a company who is making um making these shanks out of like some polymer or some man-made um mm -hmm. material that they last longer which is super cool but like let's do more in that like in that direction yeah that's cool so i, I know the the surface you're talking about and i don't remember where i experienced it but it was somewhere a warm state that they had just like uh an ice skating rink but it wasn't ice obviously because it was it was outdoors yeah. and it was a warm state but it was christmas time and they wanted to give you that feeling of you know, kind of skating in, in a snowy environment, even though it was, I don't know, it's probably Arizona or Texas or Florida or something. Yeah. But um, so for, for people who want, you know, are passionate about that kind of sport, how do you help make the sport season round and, and more accessible to people in climates that may not be able to, you know, have an outdoor ice rink or, or vice versa, sports that normally need to be in warm locations, how can you make that more accessible in colder ones? Uh, I think there's so many cool ways the students can explore. You guys can all just take a look at what you see out there, ask questions of athletes and try to find the fun new ways. I'm thinking even just the, the mouth guard you were talking about, is there a way to form a shoe around your foot? It just makes, it's just your foot only. <laughs> That's <laughs> genius. Point. That's genius. Okay, but here's the tea. I'm so sorry. I talk so much. You're like, <laughs> anyway. So there is a point shoe. There is a point shoe pad that came out okay. recently, a few years ago. That is that. It forms around your okay. toes, and in between your toes. And and <laughs> and yes, they should do that for the whole shoe. <laughs> I love it. Someone just said, always back to the mouth guard. I feel like I just had so much drama with mouth guards growing up that I just, oh, I'm really oh, uh, happy that. <laughs> I know, but that, the, that the is tea good. is if that you've ever played a sport where you had to wear a mouth guard, you know exactly what we're talking about. And it is the yeah. biggest deal. The day you change from a old style, like old school mouth guard to a new mouth guard is such, it feels just like a blessing, honestly. Yeah, so I, I hope that teams will take uh, some of your thoughts into consideration, whether that's, uh, you know, adjustable shoes for ballet or materials that just wrap around your foot. Um, we talked about the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, just going for a second because I kept thinking about the mouth guard. We the mouth guard! About the mouth the mouth guard. guard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked about taking technologies that already exist and make athletes better and then shifting them over more to people who may have, um, either disabilities and need prosthetics or just people that want to be, you know, be able to move more efficiently or faster. So I hope that teams, if you want to take on some of these ideas and you come up with prototypes, um, tag us in your ideas. I think it would be great for us to see what they, what they come up with. If you have prototypes, uh, share them with us. It'd be amazing um, to see. And can you share with everyone what, how they can find you on the different social channels? I know we're here on, on Instagram live, so they should be able to see, what your account is, but where else can they can they find you and see what you're up to um, in the world of sports and and uh, you know your show life as well? Oh yeah, okay. So I'm at Emma Dumont, and it's it's spelled just like it sounds, Emma Dumont at Instagram, and also the same thing at Emma Dumont on Twitter. But yeah. it's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> your Twitter's not that interesting. Is that what you're saying? Or, or nor my instagram neither of them are really that interesting <laughs> this is the most interesting interesting thing i've done on instagram i swear <laughs> well that's awesome i'm glad we are bringing that to the first community at least but i'm sure you're being a little humble um and then i wanted to end with with one last question for the students and that's just in this world of 2020 where Teams are already taking on big challenges. You know, every season we change the theme, we change the challenges that they need to be able to accomplish. And it's not easy. You know, Dean calls it the hardest fun you'll ever have. On top of that, we've got everything that we're facing in 2020. 
And so do you just have any messages for perseverance? This could be either from your sports life or maybe when you were trying to get casted for your first uh, opportunities. Uh, any, any pieces of advice that you want them to take away in, term of, in terms of perseverance and, and pushing through these difficult times um, and continuing to be passionate and, and innovative and inspired by everything first? Yes. So what I have to say is, and you were like anything from your sport life. And I was like, what, what? I mean, it's all perseverance It's all. It's all about persistence, but there's something, very, <laughs> but there's, there's something very specific that I learned from roller derby. Um, and I always think about this because I started as a, um, a minor underage on the juniors league. And so I always think about this and, um, I think about, um, so there, the age, the ages go down to, I think six, five, six, seven. Wow. I mean, these, these girls, these girls are really young trying this. And I, mm-hmm. I think about, you know, the idea that they're teaching these girls, these very, very young girls from a young age to, mm-hmm. it's like, it's a two tier it's or two, it's two pronged. It's like one, don't be afraid to fall down. Right, which doesn't like okay. apply to what we're, we're all going through this year. We're already down. I mean, it's like there's a lot going on. Um, and I think that's really great. And then the second part of that is like learn how every time you fall, learn to get get back up and get back up like nothing happened. Like every time someone tells you no or something bad happens. I mean, it's really the idea that these girls are learning to literally get back up as fast as they can and as strong as they can so that they can keep skating, literally. But it's also like that idea can apply to a lot of things. So I think if I was to give any words for the current state of the world, I would just say, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's really important just to remember that this isn't permanent. Mm -hmm. Nothing that's happening right now is forever. And you are, you aren't alone. And remember whenever you're, push down to get back up as fast as you can, as strong as you can, because that's the only way to do it. Lucas! I love it. Yeah. Sorry, my friend Lucas is here. I just saw him. No worries. Some love for Lucas. Uh, give, get, we'll give him <laughs> some love as well. But I loved your comment, and I, I feel that's so relevant right now, and just for everyone to remember that there's a whole community around you as well with FIRST. And that, um, you know, if you need help, you can reach out to your teammates, you can reach out to people on other teams. I feel like first is one of those communities where if you're a part of it, it's like your your best friends when you meet, right? Just because there's so many key things and, and that can be off, off the, you know, the robot playing field as well. So that's, you know, continue to support each other, continue to help each other out. When we, when we fall down, you know, try to get up as quick as you can. But if you really need help, reach out for someone in first. Reach out, reach out. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, it can be challenging. But I think that's it's awesome because you literally fall down hard in roller derby and you've got to get up and keep skating. So I, I love that. It should be like a T-shirt or something. It or, should. Maybe I'll make one. Um, wait, and I also want to say one more thing. Sorry. Um, yeah, I know I talk a lot. Um, also to like any seniors, any, any seniors out there in the first community, I understand and I understand how it may have been heartbreaking this year and maybe, you know, not getting to do all the things you thought you were going to do your senior year, but you have so much ahead of you and you forget the biggest part, the most, like the thing that touches my heart so much about first is that you're a lifer. Like I said, like I was, I didn't want to go to my first first meeting, but I was there, and then I became obsessed. Like I am, like I even wear my little like first alum. Like I am a, yes. you know, you're you're a lifer. You're in first for life. You can come back next year, be a mentor, change mm-hmm. other people's lives, do amazing things, and and you know, it's in, the path we're on might not be what we expected, but you first again is a lifetime organization you don't you're there's no out (laughs) so you will still (laughs) have those amazing moments you will still have those 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 amazing moments of glory moments of you know hardship moments of everything everything you wanted to feel this year you will feel that next year maybe as a mentor maybe as a volunteer i mean there's so much so just don't don't get too down anyway that's all i want to say no, I, I love that as well. And I feel like the only thing more rewarding maybe than having that experience as a student is being a mentor and helping them grow and then watching them have those same moments. 
you know, as students that are seniors right now, you might not be thinking that far ahead, but I guarantee that some of your best moments are going to be the ones where you weren't the one driving the robot, but that you helped inspire that team and watch them grow from someone who maybe like you, Emma, didn't want to go to that first meeting or went to the first meeting and had no clue and thought they were overwhelmed, but stuck to it and learned and, and grew. Uh, that's going to be extremely rewarding for all of you. So, um, and from a, from a sponsor perspective, the only thing better than his first student is a first student that is mentoring a team because now you're showing that kind of leadership and giving back as well. So um, there's still tons and tons of wonderful things uh, coming ahead for you all. I'm excited to see it. Um, I can't wait till we can all meet again in person uh, at, at large events. But regardless, I feel that there's still so many amazing things in the first community that are going to continue uh, to move forward. So thank you, Emma, for, for being here with us today, taking the time to share a little bit of your wide variety of experiences, you know, inside and outside of first, inside and outside of, of sports. I think you provided some really great, um, you know, value and then also some good ideas for our teams to start looking into. So I really hope I'm, I'm challenging all of you that are listening to take on some of the ideas that Emma shared and then to take us in it later and be like, hey, look what we did or what do you Look think? Look what we, I prototyped this. I'm like giving out Dean's homework for him. I'm like, guys, here's the assignment. <laughs> I need you all to. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. So I appreciate you taking the time to, to do that and share this with the community. Uh, I can't wait till we can see each other again at an event in the future, the championship or some other event. But until then, just thank you very much for all that you do and uh, for being uh, here with us today. So we'll talk to you soon, Emma. Thanks. Yay! Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. How do I turn this off? I got Goodbye. You.